Good afternoon, House of Prayer family. I'm here to bring you seven things that will destroy your dream. God gave you a dream, and it's your responsibility to keep that dream alive. So let me tell you what will destroy it faster than you can blink. The first dream killer is being impatient. Destiny takes time. Destiny takes time, so don't be impatient. The Bible says, let patience have its perfect work. That's one of the verses stuck in my, my throat every time I say it. Why? Because we live in a very impatient society. But when it comes to the divine dream that God has planned in your life, be patient. Destiny takes time. God shows you a glimpse of your destiny, but he doesn't allow you all the details in high definition between here and there. If he did, you'd probably run in fear. We grow impatient because we want it to end right now. We start behaving as though the end has already arrived. When God shows you a glimpse of your future, you need to know he is not only preparing you, but he's preparing the details of your tomorrow. If you get out in front of him, you're going to cause yourself a lot of heartache and pain because they're ahead of the schedule. Be patient. God's ways are not our ways. His time is not our time. And when we get impatient with God, do you know we can't hurry him along? God says, I've got eternity to wait. Go ahead, help yourselves. We get impatient because we say, oh, I want it now. But if God gave it to you now, it would destroy you. Oh, I know what God wants me to do. Let me just help him out. Jesus said in John 15 verse 5, Apart from me, you can do nothing. When you get impatient, you're running head first into heartache. Be patient. The second thing you need to know that will kill your dream is refusal to listen to God's counsel. If you want to know how to accomplish the dream of your life, find someone else who has done that and ask them for advice. Proverbs 12.15, it says the fool is right in his eyes, in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. One of the fastest ways to kill your dreams is not to humble yourselves enough to learn from someone else's experience. Be smart enough to take their advice. If your dream is to start a successful business, go and find a successful businessman and ask him what he did. And your dream is to have a successful marriage, go find someone who's been married 50 or 55 or 60 years and ask them what they did. But one of the most critical and arrogant things that you'll ever do is believe that you already know and refuse to ask for advice. The third thing that you can do that will kill your dream is to be persuaded by ungodly people. Not listening to godly people will kill your dream, but also... Being persuaded by ungodly people will kill your dream. David said, Blessed is the man who walks not in his own counsel of the ungodly. The counsel is simply this. When godless people give you advice, recognize that. That it's void of godly principle and character. Don't let godly people talk you into behaving like an unbeliever. It will cost you your dream. The fourth thing that will kill your dream is doubt. If you want to destroy, 
anything that God will ever give you, all you have to learn is to say, I doubt that. God wants to give you blessings. I doubt that. God wants to give you great things. I doubt that. God's going to move. I doubt that. The first chapter in the book of James, the man who doubts will receive nothing from the Lord. Even when the whole world says that your dream will never come to pass, you can keep believing in that dream. will honor that dream as long as you don't allow doubt to interfere. The fifth thing that can destroy your dream is quitting at the first sign of trouble. Everybody believes they've got a divine dream and that because they've got that divine dream, it's going to be easy sailing from here on out. And the first time they get in a struggle, they forfeit. People get a vision of God's future in their life and they take off with the power and person and purpose and enthusiasm. They start to walk out God's plan and then something happens that causes struggle. Let me tell you something. Nobody likes to struggle. That's why you call it struggle. Listen to me. If hell is not fighting against you, they're walking with you. Say, well, I just wish it wasn't so hard. If it was easy, anybody could do it. When struggle comes, consider a great cloud of witnesses that have gone before you. Hear the cheering for you from the balconies of heaven. Hear them shouting, Press on, child of God. You're closer than you think you are. Press on. Hell can't defeat you. Press on. The enemy's been defeated. Press on. God is fighting for you. Press on. You're not. You are more than a conqueror through Christ. Don't you dare quit on your dream. Give God a chance to prove he can still do the impossible. The sixth thing that will kill your dream is focusing on what you are not. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God designed you and engineered you to be who you are because he's the one who planned your destiny. But the quickest way to kill your dream is to talk about what's not available rather than focusing on what is. God didn't give you a dream of intimate attempt to intimidate you with the impossible. He gave you a dream to show you that all things are possible. His plan is not torment about what might have been. His plan is to empower. Don't whine about what you're not. Start telling the world everything that you are. Start telling the world, I am a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I am not powerless, but I am filled with the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave. And it lives in me. Whew, Jesus I'm not pathetic and empty. I am filled with the abundance of El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. I have a holy heritage and filled with the spiritual DNA of those who defeated giants, who crossed the sea on dry ground, who called fire from heaven, who made the dead live again. I feel like something good is about to happen. Because my God is the one who created the day and I will rejoice and be exceedingly glad because he gave it to me. He filled my heart with a dream. It's not about where I am. It's about where I'm going. It's about what I'm going to do. I'm healed. And I'm headed 
to a land that is filled with milk and honey. I'm going to a place that's full of favor. I'm going to rejoice his goodness and his mercy. I'll declare his works in the land of the living because that's the kind of God I serve. Tell the world what kind of God you have and what kind of child you are. The seventh thing that will kill your dream is unforgiveness. If your dream is going to become a reality, you're going to have to unleash the power of, unfor of forgiveness. Don't let unforgiveness assassinate your future. Today, you have a choice to make. You can look at your past and you can point a finger. You can say, if they hadn't done me wrong, I wouldn't be the way I am today. And if you do, you can kiss your dream goodbye. Or you can make a choice to believe that no matter how deep the wound, God can heal it. He, His plan for your life is not hindered by what others have done to you. If you'll forgive them, that dream will soar into the future and bring with it blessings that you've never known before. Are you killing your dream today? Are you killing your dream because you doubt? Are you killing your dream because you won't forgive? Are you killing your dream because you'd rather walk in the path of wicked men than listen to the counsel of the godly? God has a dream for you. If yours, it's yours and yours alone. But with that dream, you have the responsibility to keep it alive. What is a dream? It's a glimpse of your destiny. And if God has you in one hand and your destiny in the other, I assure you, your dream will come true.